Good morning and welcome to Clan Church of God. We're so glad you decided to join us today. We hope that you experience the presence of the Lord and that you're ministered to. If this is your first time being here, make yourself at home and we hope you have a great experience. There's a lot going on here at Clan Church of God, so we wanted to take a few minutes and share upcoming events for you and your family. Our King's Kids Ministry is located in the building next door. Pastor Danielle and Chuck Easterling lead our children in fun-filled Bible worship. The children are taught Bible fundamentals through games, songs, and lessons. Don't let your child miss it. And be sure to mark your calendar for October 13th as King's Kids Ministry hosts our annual Harvest Festival. It will be a joyous day of fellowship and opportunity to love on our community. Edge Ministry meets each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Youth and young adults can experience a night full of worship and Bible study. Come join us this Wednesday as we continue our study in the book of Revelation. All in Ministry was birthed by young adults who wanted to get out of their comfort zone. The group started with a few members, has grown to over 30, and continues to grow. Be sure to check out their Facebook page for upcoming events, Bible studies, and ministry opportunities. Each Wednesday night at 7 p.m., the adults gather in the fellowship hall to study the Word of God and fellowship with one another. Divine Sisterhood Women's Ministry meets once a month. Kitty Foshi leads this ministry. Check them out on Facebook to catch out all upcoming events. Like September 2nd, we will have the quarterly birthday celebration at 4 p.m. September 22nd, we will kick off the new ministry year at 2 p.m. And September 30th, we will have our Women's Ministry Night Service at 5 p.m. with Sister Rita Boatwright speaking. September 9th is Leadership Appreciation Sunday. Join us as we join together to show gratitude for dedicated leaders that have led us and guided us week after week. Battleground Covenant Support Group, led by Sister Rita Boatwright, meets the second Saturday of each month at 10 a.m. This ministry ministers to women who are hurting and oppressed. Did you forget breakfast this morning? Meet us for fuel in the fellowship hall. Coffee and donuts are served each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. before the 945 Sunday School class. Did you miss today's service or would you like to share it with a friend? Our church has a YouTube channel archiving today's service as well as past services. Simply search Clan Church in the search bar to locate our services and be sure to share them with a friend. Add us on Facebook and Twitter to see all upcoming events and prayer requests. Follow us at hashtag Clan Church. Want to use your talent for God? Voices of Praise has a spot for you. Sister Wilma Kelly leads our choir and music ministry. Or do you prefer the behind the scenes ministry? We are currently looking for volunteers in both the media ministry and the nursery. Thanks again for joining us today. We're so excited about what God has in store for today's service. We believe that God has something unique to say to you. And now, our hope is that you will leave today feeling His love stronger than you ever have before. Lord. It's all right, give praise to His name. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised for all of His goodness and His blessings and His love upon each and every one of us. You know, there are such distinctions of praise that um, uh, take its form of worship and honoring to the Lord, and uh, there are the words that we are to shout out for joy. Shout for joy. Now, I, I don't know how most of y'all are, but I'm, uh, I'm aggressive when I'm excited. Now, you know, y'all know how quiet my wife is. Y'all know how she just, you know, really quiet like and she don't make much noise. Sound like some of y'all know her better than that. Um, uh, you know, when my grandchildren and uh you know, brother Jimmy said something about grandchildren uh how many grandchildren we got here today? 
Everybody's hand ought to be up. I mean, you're a grandchild, okay? You're a grandchild. You're a grandchild, okay? Uh, Brother Jim was talking about grandchildren, you know, being, being spoiled. I think they started spoiling them after I, after me. It didn't happen with me. How many of y'all resemble that? Grandchildren getting spoiled. It happened after us, didn't it? Yeah, you know, that, that came later. They started spoiling uh, grandkids. Uh, you know, my, my granddad wouldn't let us uh, jump on the cotton in the barn. I mean, we could jump on it all we wanted to when it was in the, uh, you know, we were putting it in the trailer. But you couldn't jump on it after it got in the barn. That's just the way it was. We couldn't ride the calves. We had to wait till they became cows. It's just the way it was. You, you say, ride cows? Yeah, ride cows. How many of y'all here ever rode a cow? All right, see, look, look at that. Hold, hold your hand up high. I want folks to see that. Look at that. See, you, 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 there's some of y'all know what I'm talking about. We may have come from a different era, but we didn't come from a different world. Amen. So, uh, but, but, you know, my, my, my grandmother and my granddad didn't believe in spoiling us. I guess the best spoiling I ever got from my grandmother when she set me down to some of them big old cat head biscuits. Mm. And some of that old syrup. Mm. Phew. Some of that old gravy. No, 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 not really. I'm on to dismiss early, you know. <laughs> but now that's about as spoiled as we got. Huh? Any of y'all get spoiled like that? Okay. Now, let me get back to where I was. My, my wife, her quiet, settled self, you know. We were sitting over at one of the ball games of our grandkids. And one of them did something really good. That's my grandson. And she jumps up, hollering. And I said, Rita, you have to be so loud. Relate, she does it, doesn't she? She does it. And she did do it one time. Every time they do something, it was good. She, that's my grandson. Everybody just looking. <laughs> and, you know, I'd say, Rita, they all got grandsons out here. <laughs> But the point I'm trying to make is she was shouting for joy because her innermost being was excited because of the joy that she had for her grandson. Okay? Excited there. Um, she even did it with her own children. She really didn't do it when I did anything. You know, as one time I was... I was standing on third base. We was playing softball, church softball down at Bruton. I was standing on third base, and there was a fly ball that was hit, and there was less than two outs, and I tagged up, and I took off running. And I just started going. I got about as far as my here, Brother Ray right there. Somehow, my upper body got ahead of my lower body. And y'all going to laugh at me this morning. And I fell and bounced and was hurting all over. And because I knew I hadn't got there, yet I started swimming. <laughs> How many of you ever swam on land? I really and truthfully think 
that everybody on the other team was laughing so hard that they didn't care whether they got me out or not. And I got there, and I got my hand on the home plate, and they're all standing around me just looking. They said, are you okay? The whole team comes out of the dugout to meet me there at home plate to see if I'm okay. And my wife just sitting over there. She didn't holler, that's my husband. (laughs) Joy, shout for joy. Thank God there was one of our faithful church members sitting in the stand over there. And she said, y'all, that's my pastor. (laughs) Because the whole place was, was laughing. Just like y'all are. Joy. Joy bubbles up on the inside. The reason you're laughing this morning is because you're kind of excited on the inside of something I just told you. You see, praise starts on the inside. It doesn't just... It's not just initiated outwardly, but it's got to be on the inside. We're not supposed to be soul-faced. We're not supposed to be downcast and downtrodden. But we're supposed to have joy in our hearts, excitement in our soul. I want to read a few verses right here, and, and then I'll go on. Over in Psalms, the 47th division, they're starting at 5, reading down through the remainder of that chapter, just nine verses there uh, in total. But I'll start with verse 5. God has gone up with a shout. Everybody say shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. Now, four times... There is the commission in this one verse to praise God. Verse 7, For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of His holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. So what is the distinction this morning that I want to talk about is praise. Everybody say praise. Praise has to come from inside. Praise is not simply a lifting up of a hand. Everybody raise up a hand. It doesn't make a difference. Just raise one up. You see, what you're doing is, is you're just off my prompting. You're doing something. You're raising up a hand that is there off a prompting that you have. However, if you, without anybody saying anything to you, just raise up your hand to praise to God, then that came from the inside of your being. It came forth out of you and it becomes praise unto the Lord you just lifting up a hand is not going to honor God but when you from the heart begin to lift up praise and glory and honor to the Lord that is a distinction of praise and worship that God will honor and God will bless you for what you're doing and so we are commissioned to sing praises now in case you don't know what we just got through doing a few moments ago and that we were singing praises unto the Lord. We were not singing unto the people. We were singing praises unto God. We were lifting up the name of the Lord. We were praising Him. Four times in one verse, there is the commission to sing praises unto God. Now, everybody sings praises a little bit different than what I do. Okay? Now, I do join in when we're singing these organized praises, but sometimes I'm just making them up as I go. Anybody here ever made up a song of praise? Oh, yeah, I do it all the time. I do it going down the road. I'll do it when I'm walking through the woods. You said, aren't you going, afraid you're going to scare something off? Well, I'm hoping to scare something off. 
Amen. Because at that point, I've got nothing on my mind but praise unto God. I'm just praising His holy name. And that's what we have to do is we have to work on praise. Now, I was reading devotion. Some of you may have even read the same devotion but one time. But there was um, uh, a missionary that was, was on the mission field there, and uh, they had a village that they were in there uh, in the African area, and, and they were there uh, doing some medical things. And so there was a native that was further upstream, miles away, that had come into the village and came to them and said, we need help, that there is a sickness within our village, and we need help. Well, it was an uncharted uh, group of people that they really didn't know much about. They didn't know who they were. They didn't know where they were in this village. And, and so it could have been a very dangerous thing for them to go to where it was at there. But in order to try to do everything they could, uh, they would, would, would try to get to this village and to help them. Well, knowing that natives sometimes in these villages that they, they have a difficulty with communicating, they decided that they would try to carry some gifts and so the missionary told the guy that worked for him there in the mission field, said, I want you to go into the village over there and get some cans of sardines. Now, how many of y'all like sardines besides me? I mean, I love them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was with Jason the other day, and I said, Jason, you want a can of sardines? Well, I asked I asked Rita that all the time. I asked Lance, and Jason said, no, I don't think so. And so uh, I had a can with me, and so I, I thought about opening them up, and I said, you know, that wouldn't be good for him because he doesn't like sardines. So I didn't even open them up. I still got them. I'll open them up later for you, Jason, okay? Uh, as long as it's later, you're okay. Uh, but but sardines, you know, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's, it's good stuff if you like sardines. But if you don't, then they don't smell too good. But the reason he wanted to get these sardines is because the natives were kind of amazed about the, um, the miracle of canned fish. Only thing they'd ever seen was real fish in these villages. And, and so they'd carry these sardines so that they could show that there was canned fish already prepared. All you had to do was open up a can and eat it. And so uh, he had sent him into the village. Well, they were on this waterway in this little dugout boat, and they're going down through there. And this guy that was with them was guiding them. He was nearing um, the village there, and he pierced back to them with excitement in his eyes. Think about what I'm talking talking about excitement in his eyes, which means that he had something in his heart, that he was excited. He was approaching his own village there. We need to understand a little bit about what excitement is all about. It starts on the inside of us, and he's there. And so the missionary looks back at the guy that works for him, and he said, okay, now get out the cans of sardines because we're nearing the village there. And the guy says, oh, no, I forgot the sardines. Well, immediately the missionary realized that this was a danger, that their lives could be at stake because if these villages that, that, that are uncharted doesn't really understand what's going on, if they think you're there to do something else, then they would have killed them. And so he immediately turns around and gives a guy that works for him a good tongue lashing. You realize what you have done. You have put every one of us in danger. And then feeling a little bad about what he said and kind of embarrassing everybody around him because the man just kind of hung his head like, I know I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So the missionary said, you know, I got to say something a bit religious. So, well, I guess we'll just have to trust God. Mm -hmm. Trust in God. Why should that be the last thing we do? He had no more and said, I guess we'll just have to trust God. And there was a huge fish just leaped out of the water and fell right in the boat. The eyes of the servant that had forgotten the sardines got real big. The missionary was amazed. Why are we always amazed when God comes through? God comes through. God comes through. Listen, God's never late. He's always on time. 
He doesn't work by our timetable. He don't work by what our watch says, but he works at the time that we need him. He is always an on-time God. He is always taking care of us. Well, there it was, God supplied the fish in which they needed. Well, how big a miracle is it? Listen, to me, sardines in a can is not a miracle. But a fish that just leaps into my arms is a miracle. Amen. It just leaps into my arms. It's a miracle. What are you saying? Praise is initiated from the very depths of the heart. We are to distinguish that we are to praise Him. We are to glorify Him. One of the ways of praise is clap your hands. Come on, everybody, clap your hands. You know, when somebody says something real good and you're, you're in the audience there and someone is speaking and when they make a point you really like, everybody just kind of claps their hands. Okay. Now, we, we tend to forget that clapping of hands was a part of worship long before we ever started doing that. But sometimes in church, people are reluctant to clap their hands because, you know, they're, they're afraid of how that may appear. Well, according to what the Scripture says that we're supposed to do is to clap our hands, the most natural and most enthusiastic token of praise and honor is in view of the victories that the Lord has given us. Why shouldn't I applaud my God who does miracles for me and who works in my behalf? Why shouldn't I applaud Him? Yeah. If someone of honor and esteem walked through the door this morning, what we would all do is, would you, are y'all up for this little exercise with me? Let's all stand and give an applaud. Amen. Amen. Hey, I appreciate y'all with this little exercise because what you're doing is you're getting to the point right here. Well, why can't we understand that the Lord just came through the door this morning? Hallelujah. The Lord just entered into the presence of where His people are. And that's what He wants to do. He wants us to praise Him and honor Him as the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord whom we serve. He is worthy to be praised. Clap your hands, ye people, unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto his holy name oh praise the Lord hallelujah oh yes hallelujah hallelujah you see (laughs) yeah Oh, I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I praise your holy name. (laughs) You see, if we can do it for esteemed people that walk in, why can't we do it for the King of kings and the Lord of lords when we just felt his presence move into the midst of the house of Almighty God? Hallelujah. How are we supposed to do it? We're supposed to do it cheerfully. Oh, yeah. Not because I'm made to do it, but cheerfully. Should be an inner joy within me. Oh, yeah. Sometimes when I'm in the presence of God, not only do I clap my hands and, and, and shout praises unto Him, but I feel tears beginning to swell up in my eyes and my heart begins to leap for joy all on the inside because I feel the divineness of His holy presence as He begins to move in. And a universal clapping of hands everywhere. It doesn't make any difference where you are. Universally, people will clap their hands at the presence of the Lord. 
You know, we, we can learn a little bit from those of, of other countries that are less privileged than us. They don't have uh, padded seats to sit in or carpet and air-conditioned rooms to get in. They're, they're, uh, they are heated from the outside. They, uh, if they want a little air coming through, they have to let up, roll up the tent on the sides to where the air can kind of flow through. But when they stand up to worship God, they will stand up for an hour and they'll praise and give glory and honor unto the Lord God Almighty. I don't know about you, but I remember the old tabernacle that was there in midfield. Then we'd raise up those old garage doors around that old tabernacle. It'd be so hot you couldn't hardly stand it there. But when the Holy Spirit began to move and people began to worship God, we didn't care how hot it was. We didn't care what was going on anywhere else. It was all about worship and praise and glory and honor to the King of Kings. And we got lost in his presence as we worshipped him and we honored him. And so it's a universal thing to clap the hands. How are we supposed to do it? Vocally. The shouts of praise. Now, my wife can shout for one of them grandkids. I think she ought to be able to shout for God. Yeah. And she will. Yeah. I've always believed this. Whatever I can do in anything else in the world, when I get ready to do it for God, I need to do it with all my might. What does the scripture say about David? He danced before the Lord with all his might. Mm, hallelujah. Don't half-heartedly do something for God. Do it with a whole heart. Do it as often as you can. You see how we're supposed to do it? Frequently. Frequently. We are supposed to sing praises unto God, sing praises, sing praises unto our King, sing praises of the 47th chapter there in verse 6. It said four times that we were to sing praises unto the Lord. You can't do it too often. You need to do it knowing what you're doing. You need to know that it is you pouring out yourself of praise and honor to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Who's supposed to do it? All people. People. Somebody, everybody here, just breathe in deeply. You know what you just did? You just breathed God's air. It's God's air. You know, when we did that, who across the world breathed at the same time? Everybody that's living. So who is supposed to praise God for his air? Everybody. That's why it just breaks my heart when I hear these agnostics that want to debate whether God really is. And they want to tell me there's a lot of different gods out there. Huh. There's a lot of gods people made, but let me tell you, there's only one true living God. And there's only one true and living God worthy to be praised. And that is the God I serve. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. So everybody ought to worship God. Now, let me explain to you. I can't worship God for you. I can pray for you. I can lay hands on you and pray for you. But I can't praise God for you. You must praise God for yourself. God will not honor praise of another for someone else. He will only honor you for praising Him yourself. You must praise God within yourself. That's what we're talking about here this morning is the distinction of praise. How are we supposed to do this? Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Now, you know, sometimes we as humans, you know how we are. We're just kind of beat down. We got the mully grubs. You don't know what the mully grubs is? Get with me later. 
You know how it is. We're I'm carrying about all I can carry. Going about as far as I can go. And, and we feel that way. We really do. You say, you're just making fun of us, brother. No, I'm, I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. I just drag myself along. And God has to get my attention to let me know I'm not supposed to be downcast and trodden over. I'm supposed to look up from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from above. So what am I going to accomplish down here like this, just dragging myself along? Nothing. You know what's happened? The devil's got you looking at all the problems. Got you feeling all the weight. Just about to buckle under the load. And God is standing there saying that there ought to be the shout of triumph. Ought to be the shout of triumph. Now, you know, there's many times in the Scripture that it talks about shout for triumph. But those are small in number, but this is what I want you to realize in comparison to all the other words that are in the Scripture. But when they were to shout, were to be at exciting times. Let me just talk about one of them. Israel, Moses was gone. Israel had been given commission. Joshua was told what to do. And they were told to go against the city of Jericho. And so they were to walk around that building once a day for six days. I say that building, that whole city. They walk around it and they'd go around it for a day and they would go back and they'd retire. They'd walk around it a day. I'll get drunk if I start doing that. I'll get dizzy. They go around it for six days. They circled around that thing. And on the seventh day, they were supposed to go around it seven times. You know, we symbolically every now and then do one of those, what we call a Jericho march where we just march around, you know, symbolizing what they did. And then on the seventh time, the priests were to blow the trumpets. And when they blew the trumpets, then they all were to shout. Everybody say shout. Because what does shout do? Shout begins to sound a Triumphant emotion. Shout. It's just like my wife shouting for a grandchild that did something good. She was shouting a triumph. You know, I, I'll i be sitting at a football game, and uh, if the team does something really good, you'll see folks standing up all over the place shouting. But if there's something personal that some one of them did personally that was exciting, somebody else is shouting even louder and is lasting longer because they're excited there. What I'm trying to say to us, that our praise and our worship ought to be a motivation for us to shout praises unto God. Now, what does that do? That is a loud sound that we expel in order to get the attention. Now, what happened with Israel when they marched around and they shouted? Then the walls fell. Could I tell you, they did not fall until they acknowledged with a triumphant shout. You know what we're sometimes guilty of? We're waiting for the walls of our doubt and fear, frustration and difficulties to fall before we ever start rejoicing. Why can't we rejoice in faith? Why can't we shout before they fall? Because if we'll shout in faith, then the walls will come down. Because God is faithful to do what He said He would do. Sing praises unto God. 
Sing praises with understanding. Now, let me tell you why I make up songs. Because there's an understanding in my heart of what I need God to do. And I am singing my praise to God for my innermost feeling of my greatest need. My greatest need. I guess I have probably more than anybody else in the world said to God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please have mercy upon me. Please help me. Develop me. Mature me. That I can be your servant. Why? Because I realize the human struggles we all go through. Every one of us. There's none perfect. No, not one. Okay, I'm, I'm, there, There's none of you sitting here today that's perfect. I'm not perfect. No. But I serve a God who's merciful. Who is gracious. Who will help us in the midst of our greatest trials. Musicians, get ready. He sits upon a throne. It's of His holiness. God's not an unjust God. He's not a God that rewards us evil for good. He's not a God that who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. But he's a God who can be reached, who knows and understands. But he commissions us. He said, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Lord, our God. He is our God. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our help. In Leviticus chapter 9, the priests had been commissioned that what they were to do is to cleanse themselves, sanctify themselves. Well, there were actual situations to where sometimes they did not properly cleanse themselves and God had to deal with them. But they were told to cleanse themselves, and then offer praise unto the Lord. And so in Leviticus, in chapter 9, you can read it later, they were there and they had gathered there and they began to get things working as they needed to be. And they were to start to praise God. Praise Him. Everybody say praise. You see, we are so guilty of wanting the fire to fall before we praise. But in Leviticus chapter 9, after they started the praising of the Lord, the fire came down and consumed the sacrifices and the offering. And the people in jubilation began to worship and glorify God. You see, we've got to start the praise to begin with. We got to start the praise. We got to start the praise. Stand with me. Father, thank you for the awesomeness of your divine presence and the power of your Holy Spirit moving within our lives. And God, what our needs are great. And dear Lord, our trials are many and our difficulties, dear Lord, they mount up so very often within our lives. And Lord, how much we need you here today, God. We need you to give us strength. We need you to give us divine guidance and to bring help to us, dear Lord, in every situation. So, dear Lord, we come today to praise you, to honor you, and to acknowledge you as our God and as our help. And I ask you, dear Lord, to move within this congregation today with the fire of God coming down mightily in the midst of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. You